this at the top, I'll kind of kick out my toes. And I really, I feel like just I'll, I'll kick it out and kind of squeeze at the top, forcing, um, you know, forcing my toes out, really bring it out, really working on that vastus medialis in there, that teardrop. So until we're there, last set, best set. You gotta get at least eight. If I don't get eight, I'm gonna let the, the weight rest. Take about eight to ten seconds. Get another one, but I have to hit eight on this. You got so much weight there. If you're doing squats, hack squats, leg right. press, your core is getting a huge workout. So you're working on a lot of different muscle groups. Right. In turn, when you get strength, the muscle that muscle weight, right. and you can get thicker all over. It's definitely, it's probably the best almost thing near total body workout there. Right. If you're having a hard time sleeping, do squats. I guarantee yeah. you sleep a lot better. I feel like every muscle in my quad right now is ripped. It's just on fire. We got one more exercise to go for legs. It's always the best when uh, you go down to the bathroom like the second day or the, the, the day after a, a good leg workout and you can't get up. So it's just, you just you can't get up. So you're pushing yourself off or you're walking down the stairs and your knee gives out. If you're not, uh, if you don't have those moments, you might want to ask yourself, am I doing everything I can in the gym? Um, so we're gonna move it over to the leg press. And on these, I'm gonna really focus on time under tension, my rep tempo. Um, you know, the, the squat was a big compound movement, really explosive. The leg extension was more of an isolation movement. These, I'm gonna really concentrate on, on working those, um, those slow twitch muscle fibers. So really getting the most time under tension. That is the weight, slow down, slow up. And um, you know, for me, I have big legs. I'm more worried about quality. Um, so this will really help out quality. So when you're doing legs, like an explosive movement, like squats, you're really working those fast switch muscle fibers when you explode up. Um, so slowing down the, the rep tempo, um, getting more time under tension, hopefully we're gonna be working more of the, the detail in the legs, the slower twitch fibers to really bring out the detail. So one thing I like to, to really uh, change up when I'm doing a, a hack squat, you can really hit all angles of the quad here. If you want to hit more of the, the inside part of the quad, wider stance, feet pointed out. If you want to bring more of that quad sweep into play, if you want to work that outside of your quad, you want a closer stance, feet together, more straight up and down. Also, uh, working front to back. If you're down here, you're going to be working more of the front the front part, part of the quad, that's the medialis. If you're up here, you're really pushing through with the heels, you're going to be working more of the glutes and then also more, a little bit more of the hamstring tie-in, as well as a little bit of the quad as well. But also how far you go down. If you're only doing the last third of the movement, it's pretty much all quads. But one thing you'll notice, Chad and I you never lock out. You know, you start, you start adding weight, big weight onto this. You start locking out, it's really hard on those knee joints. So, and it, you're really giving your body a rest. So to make it harder and to make it safer, keep the tension on the body parts you're working. This is my uh, second set on here, eight to 10 reps, trying to go real slow. And I'm just gonna pretty much take a, a neutral stance for more, more overall quad development. Pretty much in the middle, toes slightly pointed outside. And uh, we're gonna see if we can get eight to 10. Got it, last one. Oh. Just like 
the other side. Ah! There you go. All right, I can oh, That's a different kind of burn than just the explosive squats. Most hurt, but these really get that deep down burn. Something that, something that I love is when the weights kind of feel like a puzzle piece together. I've got six plates on there, and it just fits so nice. I'm so easy, OCD that those are the little things in life that just get me excited. I'm so weird. When, I, when I'm doing a set, I always try to have that mind-muscle connection here, really get my mind into the muscle that I'm working on. I, I block out everything else, I go to my happy spot, and I just, you know, I think about that muscle that, I, that I'm creating, that I'm building, and each rep is bringing me one step closer to my goal, and that's kind of how I look at it. And when you, when you train like that, you know, each day gives you new meaning in the gym. Each day you're pushing yourself a little bit further than you were, and you're bettering yourself. And that's what, that's what it all comes down to. Whether you're doing a competition, whether you're just training for fun, it comes down to you beating you. There's nobody else. It's just you versus you. So, last set, one of my happy place. And that's it for quads. Take a two minute, three minute break, get some water. Kind of get your mind right, because we got hamstrings now. First exercise for hamstrings, we're just doing a seated leg curl. We're gonna be doing one warm up set, about 15 reps. But since our legs are already warm up, we're not, we're not gonna be doing any more than that. And then we're gonna be doing four working sets. And anytime you're working your, your hamstrings, it's really easy to let your, your hips and butt kind of come up and, and use your hips to move the weight. But you can see Chad, Chad here is just using all of the hamstrings. Um, also called your your bicep femoris, if you want to get all technical. But it's just like your, your bicep and you're, you're shortening that joint. Um, you know, quads, you're extending the joint. Hamstrings, you're, you're shortening it here. And on this machine, we're pushing down. You know, you're locking yourself in. Quads right now, are so tender to the touch that you know, it's a little bit, a little bit tough, but. Later on, as these episodes progress, you might see us doing hamstrings and quads on different days. That's because they're both relatively large muscles, um, you know, some of the strongest in the body. And it takes a lot of effort on your central nervous system to recover, you know, and, and to do a, a leg workout. So sometimes we'll go, we'll split it up. You know, Wednesday might be a quads, and then a Saturday might be a hamstring, something to that effect. So we're not blasting our central nervous system all in one day. And it's, it's time consuming too. I can't move my legs right now. I'll, tell, I'll start dancing a little bit more, but I'm just I gotta stay up top here. All right, no more. Make sure you're getting enough water in you as you, as you uh, are doing these sets. You don't wanna start being dehydrated, make sure you get enough water actually before you even come to the gym so you don't start cramping up, get enough sodium in you. We're going to talk a little bit about sodium um, in weeks to come and how important that it is for workouts like this. You need, if you rid your body of sodium, your muscle contraction is just going to suck. So my pre-workout meal today, is, it's the morning, so I had egg whites, salted pretty heavy, I had oatmeal, some fruit in there, um, a little bit of coffee just to make sure that I'm feeling my body for this workout. I ate about an hour and a half before I came. Um, pretty high carbs, around 70, 70, 75 grams of carbs today, just for breakfast. All right, so my fourth working set, all out to get 10. What did I do last, 205 or 220? And I push it in here so I can kick yours out there. Nah, same team, Soldier Nation.
So our last set of legs today, we're gonna be doing straight leg dumbbell deadlift. And on these, you wanna keep the pressure in your heels. So as you come up, we're gonna let the weight swing out in front of us. Knees slightly bent, you don't ever wanna lock it out. Slightly bent knees, keeping the weight on your heels. And as you, you drop it down, keeping that lower back straight, the weight's gonna come out in front of you. I don't want it down here because that'll make your lower back round out. Keep the weight out here. You'll feel it really starting to pull on, on those glutes, that hamstring tie-in, and then back up to the top, pushing through the ground with your heels all the way up. But I mean, today's legs workout's been pretty comprehensive. We've got our compound, our isolation, um, you know, the slow time under tension for the quads. Um, we've done the, the, the isolation movement, really pre-exhausted. Here now for the hamstrings, we're gonna be really stretching it out. Um, this is this is gonna be a little bit hard on your back too. So we're gonna strap up and we're gonna be wearing the belt. But um, I mean, this workout today, you wanna make sure that you're getting enough to eat on, on, on the day like today. You might wanna increase your carbohydrates. As I start carb cycling, I will make sure I plan my high carb day to coincide with my leg day, just because it's more demanding. I'm burning more calories. I'll be burning more calories throughout my day with this workout. Four working sets on here. Keeping it again, eight to 10 reps. out there get that booty get you that big booty Judy oh and my eyes just went black at least your keys on there All right doesn't do it for me man it's not uh it's not these this girl is on fire it's uh, this glue is on fire I have a start I'm stupid that was a bad joke I'm sorry <laughs> as you can see I was really really concentrate and pushing through those heels, even elevate your toes just a little bit so all that pressure is in your heels and driving it through all the way up those hamstrings, keeping the knees just slightly bent. Now that, uh, that we've gone through legs, if you guys can see the kind of effort, you know, these workouts are just gonna get harder. You know, they might not seem harder on your body because you're gonna be getting stronger every week, but if you're not uh, giving it your all in the gym, you know, effort is it's something only you know how much you're giving. If you're not giving 110% in the gym, you know, don't expect to, to get the results that you want. The only way you can do it is by leaving it all at the gym every day. And that'll turn, you know, it just makes the rest of your day go by so much better knowing how, uh, how hard you've pushed yourself. Anything else in your day you know you can overcome because you just did a hellacious leg workout where you thought you couldn't do something. But, uh, you know, training partner pushes you, lean on people in life just the same way. You know, those people that you surround yourself with, make sure you, you know, who are rooting you on, being positive sources in your life, just like a good training partner. So, that was our, our first leg workout. Pretty basic as far as the movements went. We stuck pretty much eight to 10 reps, and uh, we're just gonna be building from here on. But we're gonna have soldier apparel, Coming out, coming out shortly. So be on the lookout for that. Um, this is just this is a movement we're creating, doing things the hard way, no shortcuts. Inside, outside of the gym, you know, you're bettering your life. We're doing it together. Really easy to want to just bounce after a leg work like that. You're done. You're spent. You know, the couch sounds nice with your protein shake, watching football, but. You gotta make sure you're stretching in here. You're really gonna, gonna thank yourself later if you're able to come, come into a, a room like this and just stretch out, let the body cool down a little bit. Um, still trying to active sort of stretch a little bit. Static stretching here is something that's okay. Also, foam rolling, that myofascial release is really good. But uh, you know that workout, we did a lot of shortening of the muscles. Your legs, your uh, you know your your delayed onset muscle soreness is going to be you know I guess there's not a whole lot of research saying that you will be less sore if you stretch out, but I always feel like I have been. You try to prevent those fibrotic adhesions and all that muscle tissue. What the doctors not saying. enough shortening that muscle. Yeah, I mean one of the biggest reasons for injury is lack of flexibility. Why did we get away with so much when we were kids, right? Rebound is so fast because you're so flexible. But as you age, you lose that. So that's 
why stretching is important. Anything to uh, make me less sore tomorrow and the next day too because uh, it's gonna be bad. Uh, but it's that soreness that, that lets you know, you know, it feels good to be sore. You know, when you wake up and, and all of a sudden your body's reminding you of the work that you put in. There have been very few times, I guess, in the last couple years, you know, that something hasn't been a little bit sore. Now there's a difference between being sore and, you know, pulling a muscle type thing. You don't want to, uh, you know, if you're sore for more than a week after doing a certain body part, you probably went a little bit too hard. But, you know, a couple days, even up to five days, you know, I've been sore from a grueling leg workout. And like I said, it's just that, that reminder that you're alive, that you're, you're pushing yourself, that you're, you're using that, that body that, that God gave you.